So we work quite a bit of the time on the mental part of the game. Yeah, and you know what? And a lot of times, I guess if you work on that aspect, you know, the whiteboard aspect, uh, looking at film and all that stuff, that actually makes you a smarter team, a more prepared team. I mean, because you can, I guess you can lift all the weights and do all the stuff on the field, repetition over and over and over again. But the end result is, you know, if you don't study that playbook or if you don't know, you know, if you don't know how to read this defense or, you know, I I, 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 I guess I'm, I'm in your corner. I guess that's what I'm saying is that I totally understand that. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is, you know, the body only has so many hits that it can take. Right. And we try to eliminate as many of those as we can for, uh, you know, for the players and try to keep our guys up. One of the things I tell our coaches every week, get them to the game. They don't need to prove to me that they're tough during the course of the week. You know, my chances improve of us winning if our good players are there on Saturday. So let's don't beat them up in practice. Yeah, and that, that needs to be the uh, the recipe for a lot of a lot of these coaches. Really starting at the high school level because I mean, I you see a lot of stuff and you're like, oh my god, these kids go be dead before the, the before they even get to Friday. You know what? And it's scary too because I have grandsons, man, and to see how some of these guys coach and what they coach and what they put the emphasis on is uh, it's amazing to me that more kids are not in. Uh, getting hurt, especially when you got guys that, and I don't mean this in any disrespect to anybody, but guys just coming off the street with no training, trying to coach eight-year-olds. I think that's totally unfair but to those eight-year-old kids trying to play tackle football, and, you know, they're trying to prove how tough they are. And it happens all the time. It happens all the time. Uh, this is the HBCU Report. Rob Calloway on the line right now with Coach Rod Brightway. He is the head football coach of the North Carolina A&T Aggies. Uh, the Aggies in action uh, versus South Carolina State University uh, in Orangeburg. And so uh, before I let you go, Coach, uh, you've given us so much great uh, information and, and so much great perspective. I just have to ask you this. Uh, you, we just lost the late great. Well, he is late great now. Hugh Hefner. Any thoughts on Hugh, Coach? Yeah, that was my running partner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I have no. I don't. Um, I just saw him on the internet this morning where he passed, and you know, God bless his family. And those were some great articles, right, Coach? Great articles. <laughs> I, yeah, back in the day, I guess. <laughs> Boy, you something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach. He is Coach Rod Broadway, head coach of the North Carolina Anti Aggies, in action this weekend versus South Carolina State. Uh, with a, I said 8 o'clock. It's a 6 o'clock kickoff from Orangeburg. Uh, so, Coach, thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to talking to you later in the season, okay? My pleasure, brother. All right, always great stuff from Coach Rod Broadway. Really appreciate him for joining the show this morning. Um, James Spady, the head football coach of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs, joins us on the other side of the break. It is homecoming on the campus of Alabama A&M, or up on the hill as they call it. So we will talk with Coach Spady coming up next. This is the HBCU Report. Don't forget, follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram, at HBCU Report. And don't forget to check out our content partner, sportsnewsandbrews.com. When we're not here, we're there. And there is sportsnewsandbrews.com. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037, so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right. But don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. HBCU sports fans who finally have a voice. The HBCU experience lives here. This is the HBCU Report with Rob Calloway. This is the HBCU Report being heard via Spreaker.com and now the Two Live Stews Radio Network. Another Saturday morning. Oh, man, thank you guys for tuning in to the show, however you may be listening. Now, for all my folks, all my Bulldogs, it is homecoming on the campus of Alabama A&M University up on the hill, as they call it. Hmm. 
But uh, anyway, right now I'm being joined on the line by a good friend of the show, Coach James Spady. He is the head football coach of those Alabama A&M Bulldogs. First of all, Coach, thank you for joining us on the show. Yeah, you're welcome, Rob. But I don't know what, what was that shade that you just, <laughs> <laughs> you just <laughs> You know this shade. You know this shade all the way. You know this is you know this is shade all the way from the mean streets of Montgomery, Alabama, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so how you yeah, doing, haters man? Go hate, you're right. Haters go hate. Yeah, say what you say. Say whatever you want to say. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you? Oh man, I can't complain, man. Good to have you back on the line, man. Always, um, always, always a pleasure talking to you. So, uh, let's talk about this season. Got off to not a favorable start, but but the one thing I will say is that the opponents that you guys took on the first three weeks, oh my God, I don't like I don't know too many SWAC teams that would have been ready for uh, Alabama, Birmingham, Vanderbilt, and a uh, uh, South Alabama back to back to back. That that's a whole lot. Um, so, um, how has this prepared you guys uh, for SWAC play? Uh, there's there were two ways that I was looking at that, um, you know, during the preseason. Number one, you know, just the idea that that playing that kind of competition could have you battle tested. I mean, you know, if you if you can navigate that part of your season, you know, your team is pretty well tested by the time you get through that three game mm-hmm. stretch, and that was a, that was the positive spin. That's the way we looked at it going in, and we tried to make sure. Our kids understood we got to play well and, you know, you got to go out and compete no matter who you're playing. And, uh, you know, hopefully on the back end of that, you feel pretty well battle tested. The other thing that I was looking at, maybe a a more negative outlook, was, you know, you got to stay injury free as much as you can because, you know, a schedule like that can tax you physically. And if if it tax you physically, you know, it could ruin any chance you have to be competitive you know, in your conference schedule. And so, uh, you know, by the grace of God, I think we got through that thing, you know, fairly healthy. We have some we have some guys that are nicked up and things like that. But, uh, you know, we've been able to, you know, next man up kind of mentality, and we've been able to, to work our way through it. So um, hopefully it's going to be a benefit to us. Absolutely. Well, you all opened up SWAC play last weekend with a, a 30-13 victory over Texas Southern. I heard they brought that band down uh, to Huntsville with them. Uh, so I'm sure it was a treat for all the band fans out there between the, the, the marching, uh, MMW, the marching maroon and white and the ocean of soul. I'm sure that everybody got their, got their fix. They did. It was a, a Friday night before the game. They had a little battle of the band. Oh, they did. Stadium and, yeah, they did. And, uh, you know, I, I thought it was a, a pretty nice turnout. Um, just to watch those guys go after, after each other and two pretty good bands. It, it was, it was entertaining. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, this weekend, you got a big one uh, against uh, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, a team that, in my opinion, they've really been turning this thing around under uh, uh, Coach Coleman. And uh, things seem to be on the upswing for for Arkansas Pine Bluff, a team that uh, usually is a forgotten in the conference. Uh, When you look at at this team on tape, uh, what are some of the things that you see compared to your Bulldog squad? Well, a lot of respect is due to UAPB. They're they're, a like I, like you just said, an up and comer, so to speak, um, and I mean that with all due respect. Uh, tremendous amount of respect for Coach Coleman. He, he's he's put together, you know, what is a, a fairly young football team. They they've assembled some talent, and you watch them on film, and and they're an able football team. You know, they're riding high right now. They got they had a big win. It was a statement win um, for them the other day and, and uh, last weekend. And, um, you know, that's that's going to help them in terms of their level of confidence going into this weekend. So, you know, we better be ready to match that intensity or exceed it and, uh, and, and have a, in order to have a chance to come away with a win. Oh, yeah, and that's what it's all about trying to – I mean, because it's homecoming, and you know you want that win on homecoming. It's nothing – it's only – I guess it's only two games that really matter, right? And that's homecoming and the Classic. I mean, because that's how it is at Bama okay. State. I mean, let's 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 be honest. That's what our folks look for. Our, you know, the bulldog faithful. They they want us to beat the. They want us to win homecoming. They want us to win the classic. They'd love for us to go to a championship. But you know, those are the real important things. And you know what? For I'm a football coach, and for me, I understand what their feelings are. 
But for me, every game is is a classic or a homecoming. Mm-hmm. They're all very important, especially when you're trying to compete for a conference championship, which is our goal. Um, you know, I want to win every one of them, and this is just the next one up. It, it happens to be pretty important because it is homecoming. You're right about that. This is the HBCU Report. Rob Callaway on the line with James Spady. He is the head football coach of the Alabama and m Bulldogs. They are in action this weekend versus the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. It is homecoming on the campus of Alabama and m or up on the hill, as they say. Uh, so, yeah, so it's going to be a well, good time. I've been to homecoming now, Coach. I know it's a great time up there, so I'm not, I'm not, trying, to, yeah. I'm not trying to poo-poo on homecoming now. Cause this is, uh, well, good. Uh, oh no! Yeah, because that, that's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> no, no man. We, we do. We have a we have a very good uh, homecoming game day atmosphere. Uh, it's really nice because I mean you know I'm a I'm a college football purist. Uh, I, I enjoy the tradition and the spectacle and the, and the pageantry of college football and and this is second to none as far as I'm concerned. Of course, I'm biased. But it's second to none as far as I'm concerned, and, and uh, it's always a good time. Yeah, you're right about that. And like I said, I, I cannot hate on it. it, it I, I've always had a great time. Um, yeah. But but moving forward, uh, you mentioned wanting to compete for a SWAC championship. Now, we know that this is this will be the final year of uh, the SWAC football championship. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you know, I, originally I was, you know, I, I was – completely opposed uh you know i just i didn't have the facts and then when i was when i was armed with the facts i I realized that that uh there's really only you know really one viable option for us in terms of going forward now there's some things that we're going to have to work out as a conference you know um playing a full conference schedule again maybe that's something that's on the table i'm not sure um but you know there's some things like that that we have to work out but uh, to, to throw our support and our, and our uh, you know, our collective work behind the Celebration Bowl, it, it allows us in the MEAC to set ourselves apart from other FCS conferences. Um, you know, who else in FCS is going to be playing in a bowl game? And then if, 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 if you're lucky, as an HBCU, you might get a playoff game right. against Mont or, you know, somebody. North Dakota. You, know, you have to go. <laughs> Right, you have to go on the road. And so, you know, I've always been of a mindset that, you know what, we should take our ball and go play somewhere else, and and figuratively speaking. Right. And so for us to be involved in, in what could be, you know, something that, that's a, a, a trailblazer kind of event for, for FCS football, you know, I, I'm behind it 100%. And, and if the SWAC championship game has to go away for us to make that, you know, something that, that the the FCS Rose Bowl, so to speak, and I'm you know, just kind of uh, trying to whack a little bit. But, oh, no, because uh, it uh, is, because it'll be in that Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Hey, it yeah. is, yeah. And if and if that game has to go away for us to make it that way, then, you know, I'm, I'm in support of that because, again, you know, I'll go in the homes and try to sell, you know, recruiting uh, to, to kids and, and their families, and then you have something that, you know, other folks can't point to as as a benefit at the end of the year. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to us going forward with, you know, trying to make the celebration both something that's supposed to be very special for both conferences. Well, you know, my my only thing is is that I see um, the the log jam that ends up happening in the MEAC from time to time with them not having the championship game, and then you might end up with Central, uh, South Carolina State. Uh, North Carolina A and T, Bethune Cookman, like in one year you ended up with all four of those teams with a share of the conference, and then you had to well, that, go ahead. Yeah, I, and I recognize that that could be a, a, a potential, uh, but that's something that we have to work out as, as as a conference, you know, and and try to avoid being in that position um, by making sure our tiebreakers are solid, uh, making sure that we have the the mathematics. Mm-hmm. You know, in order so that so that we're not having five or four or five teams tied for a championship, and and then you know can't figure out who who gets the the bid. Um, we've got to do our homework and make sure we're on top of that. So uh, you know that doesn't happen. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, you got to get the man. That's the one thing that I will say about the MEAC is that they figured it out. Uh, and but see, last year it was so easy because it just came down to who was going to win Central versus A and T, yeah. and Central ended up pulling it out. So. Uh, last that's year, that's the other thing too. 
I mean, you get a chance to win it on the field. I mean, yeah. you know, and that that could solve all the problems if if 